What conspiracy theories do you think are too logical to ignore? This one isn't as serious as most of the ones on here, but I enjoy it and have gotten into many a convo about it. In the 2017 NBA playoffs a player named Markeith Morris, who at the time played for the Washington Wizards, hurt his ankle in game 1. This was only 11 minutes into the game and he didn't return. The injury looked like he would be out for a couple weeks and no one expected him to play game 2. But, he showed up game 2 and played as if he was never injured, in fact, had his best game statistically of the playoffs to that point. Here's where it gets interesting. Markeith Morris has an identical twin brother named Marcus who also plays in the NBA. His brother was playing for the Pistons, who were eliminated from the playoffs already. The theory is that Marcus played for his brother. Both brothers have the exact same tattoos and don't have any super apparent different traits. I mean that has to be the reason they have matching tattoos in the first place right? Wow, that's wild and very believable, since they've admitted to doing this in the past. 1. Kennedy gets elected too. Kennedy is critical of the CIA, his own VP and military for wanting to turn the Cold War into a hot one and the willingness to perform false flag operations, Project Northwoods, to do it. 3. Kennedy is shot for. His VP takes power 5, classified. You missed out the most important part, he bangs Marilyn Monroe. Edit, step 2.5, Kennedy bangs millimeters. So my dad actually confirmed a popular addict conspiracy theory. I told him about the laundry detergent caps have the full line too high on purpose, and he told me this was true. He interned at Panji, and they taught him the full line was for the highest level of cleanliness our product can give. You can get away with using much less detergent. Pretty sure I saw it here on Reddit at one point. But someone brought up the art trade. That these million dollar art shows slash individual pieces that go for insanely high prices are just a way for money laundering. I worked in a museum for 10 years. A very wealthy woman, who was the head of the board of directors, would have her son buy works of art for the museum. Like a dollar sign 300k dollar sign 400k work of art. He would then donate it to the museum, and get a full tax write off for it. And by donate I mean it would come with a stipulation that it would go back into his own personal trust after a period of 10 to 15 years in which time the work would had risen in value to about $1 to $1.5 million and could be sold off. The way the wealthy can hid their money is unlimited. David Miscavige, the chairman of the Church of Scientology definitely murdered his wife and is getting off scot-free for it. Him and his wife got into a pretty heated argument in 2007 and she hasn't been seen since. Lawyers hired by David claim she is still alive and devotes 100% of her time to work at the Church of Scientology, which is why she hasn't been seen since August 2007. In 2013, a former member of the church had filed a missing person report that was closed after a few officers had spoken and seen Mrs. Miscavige, even though there's no evidence whatsoever of this meeting, all missing persons reports now are turned down. Since this investigation is forever closed, Lira Mini has had it investigated as well, and written letters to Shelley with no response. Before he left the church she wrote letters to Shelley, that the church refused to deliver, and when she asked where Shelley was she was told she didn't have clearance to ask that question. Amazed that I haven't seen Gary Webb mentioned. Exposed the CIA for assisting in drug trafficking, and commit suicide with two bullets to the head. Reminds me of the dude in India who was stabbed in the back 12 times with a knife and the police ruled it as a suicide. The Denver airport theory. I mean the capstan of the building literally has the Freemason logo on it. There's some weird ass apocalypse murals on the walls. The runways look like a swastika. And there's a 50 foot tall horse statue with red glowing eyes. I mean seriously who the mark designed that place. Building the airport cost 3 billion dollars more than expected, and the labor was piecemealed out through countless contractors, so nobody who built it knows the full scope of it. Oh and that 50 foot tall horse statue with red glowing eyes killed its creator. Dyer is a weird place. Drive. Claw is Inspector Gadget. Edit. Dr. Claw is human inspector and Inspector Gadget is obviously a younger clone of him. Some torture devices such as the Iron Maiden were made up hundreds of years later, so people would think well, 
A regular hangin' ain't too bad there. This is literally true as far as the Iron Maiden. I'm pretty sure one of the Simon Whistler things talked about this like last week. Nutley NJ, where Martha Stewart was born, has a butcher shop every other corner. How much meat does one small blue collar town need? Suspicious. This gives me hot fuzz vibes lol. With all the scientists in the world there has to be at least one secret lab on this planet, where they have cloned a human. I mean, it's theoretically possible to clone a human being. The main setback is ethical concerns. Then again, when has that ever stopped some people? Trader Joe's makes their parking lots small intentionally to make it seem like it's more popular. My dog did not go to doggy Disneyland because he won a lifetime ticket for being a good boy I think that he in fact died. Our phones and all the apps on them are listening to conversation. I'm super anti-conspiracy theory but this has happened to me way too many times in the last two years. I impulse shop really really badly. I carry cash for the explicit purpose of I can use this guilt free for an impulse purchase. Two years ago I bought high end lipstick with cash in a store, after doing zero research on the brand. Next day I had ads for it despite never even previously hearing of that company before. I had only talked with a sales of Siyashi and about the brand for a while. Six months later a very similar thing happened, when I switched hair care products to very specific brand. Later that night I had ads for their company which I had never heard of, or looked up pre or post purchase. Eight months ago I ordered a sea idea I had never heard of at a bar in New York City, didn't research the company or anything about it. Not even two hours after I left the restaurant I had ads for that brand of sea idea on my Facebook. There's easily five to seven more times I could think of, but these are the ones that bother me the most, because I'm positive the transactions were all in cash, I had never looked up the product before, and I had very targeted specific ads from those exact companies less than a day later on most of my social media. Edit to add, I know how location services work, and that that's how advertisers get a lot of data, because of where you go and shop. But shopping at a huge store with hundreds of brands, Ulta, Sephora, Masses, etc. What are the odds I got an ad for the exact products I bought, like genuinely? They weren't on sale, weren't researched, the sales reps didn't help me find them. Same thing with the bar, they carry dozens of brands of booze and speciality beers and stuff. What are the collective odds I got a multiple specific ads for the exact brand of C idea I ordered off of menu of 50 plus drinks? That's the weird part. If I had just gotten generalized targeted ads for those stores or random products in those stores, fine. Or if I had gotten ads for stuff I had bought before it researched a lot, also fine. But the odds of three ads for highly specific brand slash items within a day of me buying those items from a large broad store in cash is just too much. Even the most advanced algorithm couldn't have predicted a spontaneous $100 Lorax slash Mac lipstick purchase with the only data being this person is in Ulta and has googled Urban Decay I should out before. Totally believe. Never did any research about martial arts or anything, but mention wanting to learn Krav Maga while scrabbing coffee with a friend, and suddenly I get a ton of ads for Krav Maga and J.I. Jitsu courses. McDonald's shake machines are never actually down. The night crew people are just too lazy to clean it. That's usually the case from what I've been told by people who I know that work at McDonald's. They're basically like it's a giant pain in the ass to clean, and it takes literal hours to do. I work at McDonald's. The shake slash ice cream machines have an automatic heat treat cycle that takes a couple hours. This happens once every 24 hours, every day. If the store only has one machine then there will be times when they won't have shakes or sundaes. Once a week the machine gets fully emptied, taken to pieces, cleaned and reassembled. It is a giant pain in the ass. The store I work at has two machines. On busy nights going down to one machine is very disruptive, and that also causes the remaining machine to sometimes have issues. Poor ice cream flow. Ice cream is too runny as a result of overuse. At a store with one machine the result is no ice cream or shakes. The shake machine which is the other half of the combo machine, name of the machine, rarely has issues and only goes down with the heat treat or weekly clean. Obviously some McDonald's might be working with older slash newer machines and other workers experiences might differ at different stores or regions. 
since these should be happening at the same time each night, you should be able to ask what time the heat treat cycle is for the machine, and avoid coming in at those hours, and also what time slash day the weekly clean is, and once again avoid that time period. Oh 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 time to sort by controversial. Guys I know this is a really crazy theory, but I think some rich people might be corrupt. Pro tip, read the comments in Alex Jones voice before deciding whether to believe them. FYI the moon landings were real in fact there were 6 in total and it's not hard to achieve. The real moon landings were the friends we made along the way. Typing in your ML address to unsubscribe from a mailing list actually enters it into more mailing lists. Nasker is fake it's just Hot Wheels going around a track and all the sounds are made by one guy in a sound booth imitating what he thinks a race car would sound like. The evidence is out there, wake up people. Mike Bloomberg is a ploy by YouTube to get us all to get YouTube premium, to stop seeing his ads.